I'm Dallas Austin. I'm Kim Kardashian. MTV Cribs. Let's go. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to 106 and Park. What's up, y'all? I'm free. Ever gawk at those lush celeb pads on MTV Cribs and 106 and Park and wish for a life swap? My Ferrari 360 mode. Hold that thought. Ever wonder if Hollywood's glam is all for show? From Ja Rule landing himself a lawsuit by renting a mansion and 50 Cent playing pretend cars with cars that aren't even his. Makes you think, doesn't it? Not all that glitters in Hollywood is gold after all. Back when MTV Cribs was all the blaze, the music scene was all about the powerhouses like the Spice Girls and Destiny's Child. And there was one girl group itching to join those ranks, 3LW. And do you know, their debut album made waves on the charts. No more, Baby I'ma Do Right, racked up a jaw-dropping 1.3 million sales in the U.S. in platinum certification. And just like that, 3LW had managed to amass a following, but the group still had a long way to go before they could reach the same heights as Destiny's Child. Still, those gals weren't going to let anyone stop them from impressing fans when it was time for them to give a tour of their house on MTV Cribs. And so what did the ambitious gals from the R&B group do to impress fans? They showed off a gorgeous three-bedroom home in Malibu, California. Hey, what's up, MTV? We are 3LW, and you all are cordially invited to check out our crib. But here's the kicker. It wasn't their home. One group member, Notori Naughton, spoke about lying on MTV Cribs during an interview in 2022. She said, the problem is we're always comparing ourselves to other people. Back when we did Cribs, we had to make it look like we were rich and famous with the cars, with the house, and we were like in a two-bedroom apartment sharing a bed, if I remember correctly. Fortunately, Notori and others know better than to lie these days. Picture this. It's time for everyone's favorite segment on 106 and Park, Freestyle Friday. You've got Blessed and Go Hard Jetson in the ring ready to throw down. Blessed got a lot on the line with two wins away from securing the number two seed in the March Mayhem Tournament. Will he be able to do it? Well, it almost looked like he was until the second round came around. Suddenly, Jetson lost himself to the heat of the moment and yanked Blessed's cap off. Now the Bronx champ kept it cool at first until Jetson shoved him off the stage. A bad move that called for war. Suddenly, the two men were throwing punches in front of the cameras instead of dropping bars. And you can bet Bless was pissed about being snubbed like that. That's not exactly show-friendly behavior, and so both participants were disqualified from the tournament. But that ain't nothing compared to the beef between rapper Lil Webby and host Roxy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Welcome to the happy home. Ja Rule had the same idea when it was time for him to show off his digs. He shot through to fame during the 2000s and garnered attention for his gangster rap. Yet, despite reaching number 11 on the Billboard Hot 100 with his second single, Between Me and You, it's been between me and you baby. it seems like Ja Rule was short on cash to buy himself a luxury mansion. But that didn't mean he was going to disappoint his fans around the world with a shabby-looking apartment. He had an image to maintain, and so his team rented a mansion in Miami in 2001 when it was time to shoot the episode. While some players go down the beach and they rent rooms and such things like that, we rent mansions to have good times. It all went according to plan, for the most part. Ja Rule impressed everyone, and Jeanette Varela, who owned the mansion, made a quick buck. Except there was one problem. Ja Rule wasn't supposed to invite 600 guests during his four-day stay at the mansion. He also wasn't supposed to cause structural damage, but guess what? That's exactly what he ended up doing. And when Varela found out the truth after watching the MTV episode, she filed a lawsuit demanding more than $1 million. Fortunately, Ja Rule is now 48 years old, doesn't have to rent a mansion these days, with an estimated net worth of $4 million. But let's be real about one thing. He was better off not pretending on the big screen. The same goes for Dame Dash, who shot to fame working as Jay-Z's manager and business partner at Rockefeller Records. However, while Jay-Z went on to make millions, Dash wasn't as lucky. He lost two Tribeca lofts to foreclosure in 2010, leaving him with $7.3 million on mortgages. 
to add salt to the wounds, he was $100,000 behind on his rent on his New York mansion. Still, Dash had an image to maintain, and he couldn't disappoint his fans on MTV Cribs. So what did he do? Well, he called up his good pal Mariah Carey and asked to borrow her mansion for the shoot. This way, Dash got to show the crew around at impressive dig in the heart of London's Chelsea area, where only the rich can secure a place. Fortunately, Dash turned his life around since then with a net worth of $2 million, and although it pales in comparison to Jay-Z's $2.5 billion, it's still something to be proud of. That said, he's not the only one who's managed to turn over a new leaf after lying on MTV Cribs. <coughs> Cassie Ventura. <coughs> Picture this. It's the summer of 2005. You're cruising through the streets with the windows down, the warm afternoon breeze blowing through your hair. You turn on the radio and it's the model's electro-banging debut single, Me and You, blasting through the speakers, the perfect summer tune. But wait, you go home, tune in to watch 106 in Park to watch Cassie's performance that day and you're greeted with this. Yeah. Yeah. Between the whispered vocals and the awkward stage presence, our girl was not giving. Let's just call it the performance that killed her career, literally. Thankfully, she managed to save the boat from sinking and is sitting on a cool $4 million today with much better vocals. Weirdly enough, we've got a lot of folks suffering from the same fate. Show it's your birthday. 50 Cent is the last person you'd expect to lie on MTV Cribs, considering his illustrious career as a rapper and all the awards he's gotten. The South Jamaican business tycoon has everything one can dream of. MTV Cribs is here. I don't want to do Cribs unless I can do the whole thing. So I'm going to take over the whole show. <laughs> Unfortunately, that wasn't the case back in 2007 when he made an appearance on MTV Cribs. 50 was still climbing the ladder of success, but it looks like he wanted to leave an impression badly. During his house tour, he proudly showed off three Ferraris, but fooling millions of fans isn't a piece of cake. I get around my really rich friends and they say, I got a Ferrari at 50, I say, me too. Some eagle-eyed fans noticed the initials SC on all three cars, which belong to a notable collector in the Ferrari world. What's more, according to his 2015 bankruptcy filing, the rapper admitted to only being able to rent lavish cars and pass them off as his own. No one knows why 50 Cent didn't buy the cars himself since he had a net worth of $55 million in 2007 compared to his $40 million in 2024. Hopefully, he learned his lesson. That said, he's not the only rapper in the business to stoop so low to maintain his image. And so does the 3-6 Mafia, the hip-hop group that emerged on the scene in 1995 with their debut album Mystic Styles, captivating fans of the genre with their unique voices straight off the bat. Over the years, the group would go on to rock the charts, even bagging an Oscar for their soundtrack to the 2005 movie Hustle & Flow. Enter MTV Cribs, eager to take fans on a behind-the-scenes tour of the humble abode of hip-hop's hottest sensation. Well, welcome yeah. to our vacation crib. Check out the ride first. Check out the ride. The, sunny floor. the episode featured all three men living together in a sprawling space, except the guys weren't spitting facts. Turns out the mansion belonged to one of the members, Juicy J, while the other two had their own places to crash. Apparently, MTV Cribs thought it would be more of a hit if they showed the members living together. Except, they forgot about the part where fans don't buy the narrative of three guys living under the same roof. It's still better than renting a mansion and ending up with legal troubles, all because you went a little too wild. Remember the R&B group B5? Maybe TNT Boys rings a bell. Well, after the youngest joined the group, the five breeding family brothers were burning with passion to prove themselves to the world. And what do you know, their album B5 peaked at number seven on the top R&B hip hop chart in 2005. Not bad for a bunch of new kids on the block. But the performance of their single, All I Do on 106 in Park, wasn't all that hot. And I can't wait to get to school each day and wait for you to pass my uh, 
maybe someone went too strong on the auto-tune in the studio. Though the brothers have chosen to focus more on their solo career since then, they did capture hearts once again as a group with the release of their single, Waves, in 2019. Unfortunately, they never delivered on the EP, New Jacksons, they promised fans. Yo, what up, man? It's your boy Bow Wow. Welcoming y'all to my crib, you know what I mean? Now, let's talk about Bow Wow, shall we? A young rapper from Columbus, Ohio, who hit the big leagues before his voice even decided to drop. Dropping Beware of Dogs at the tender age of 13 in 2000. I'm the hottest thing to hit the block just to see you from He was swimming in double platinum success faster than you could say puppy love. But it turns out double platinum records don't necessarily translate to a garage full of Italian luxury. Cue the infamous MTV Cribs episode where Bow Wow, our host with the most, takes us on a tour of his Miami palace, flaunting rides so sleek they'd make you eat. Bring y'all inside, I'm gonna show y'all my whips first, all right? This is the Bumblebee right here. My Ferrari 360 motor. Except, oops, those weren't exactly his pups in the kennel. Turns out the Bentleys and Lamborghinis were just visiting, courtesy of Prestige, Miami's go-to luxury car rental. Yep, the cat, or should we say puppy, was out of the bag. Fast forward, and hopefully our man Bow Wow's got his own set of wheels now, with three million bucks in the kitty. That said, it's not always about the digs. Sometimes young singers with dreams of topping the charts end up biting off more than they can chew. Webby emerged as a fan favorite in the early 2000s with tracks like Gimme That and Swerve. But all that quickly came tumbling down. Back in 2011, the rapper graced the set of 106 in Park as a judge for the Freestyle Friday segment. He seemed to fit right in as he posed for some pictures with host Roxy, but cue the commercial break and suddenly there was no trace of Webby. It down. Southern rap star. Gotta wipe me down. Wipe you down. At the end of the show, host Terrence J solved the mystery by saying that Webby was no longer welcome on the show. Why is that? Well, fans didn't get an answer right away from the production team, but Webby was more than willing to share his side of the story. According to him, Terrence was feeling some type of way about him getting along with Roxy. I'm not, I am BET. Look at you looking at BET right now. So Terrence, I'm sorry your wanted me to put that on her, mate. But Roxy cut Webby down to two inches when she revealed the truth about him being banned. Apparently, he was inappropriately touching her in between commercial breaks, and the management wasn't going to tolerate that kind of behavior from a guest. It's really sad. It was taken the way it was looked upon, and it's like, oh, you know, you he was banned. And yeah. I think that any light, you have sisters, cousins, aunts, yeah. your mother. I love, I love her. You know, love um, and any light that a woman feels that she was disrespected, and, and I get, I have thick skin. I don't, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But when you're at your job and somebody sexually harasses you, Bearing that in mind, it wasn't a surprise when fans read about him being arrested on suspicion of robbery and battery after kicking and pushing a woman down a flight of stairs. You used to take everything from, you You know, you used to rob folks, basically. Well, here it is. You, you, that's your past, though. Yeah. What, what's, what, no, what stopped I, I, you? Like, I, I wasn't robbing. Like, I just take it. Yeah. Like, like just, just give me that. Give yeah. Me that. Not surprising after what he was accused of in the past, huh? It just goes to show the glitz and glam you see on TV might just be a little dog and pony show. So the next time you're flipping through Cribs or 106 in Park reruns, remember, it's all just smoke and mirrors, baby. What was the most shocking revelation that you learned? Comment down below.